Hello, welcome to Pyrex Screencast. In this screencast, I'll show you some of the new features available in Pyrex 0.9.3 release. Before I start, I'd like to thank all the users who suggested this new feature and bug fixes that went into this release. One of the new features available in this release is an option to run inverse virtual screening. And for users who are not fam familiar with inverse virtual screening, this allows you to run docking of one or multiple ligands against multiple receptors. This way you will be able to find to which receptor your ligand binds to. This is as opposed to the regular virtual screening when you run multiple dockings of multiple ligands against single receptor. That way you are trying to find which uh, ligand binds to your receptor. So the way this is done in Pyrex, so I'll start here and for users who are not familiar with Pyrex, I recommend watching Getting Started screencast. So here I'll use the Vina wizard and I'll click start and I'll select the ligand from the list of ligands. Again, if you don't know how to get your ligand PDBQT files or macromolecule folders there, I recommend watching the earlier screencast. So here I'll select two macromolecules, this one CRN and one HSG. I use the shift key together with mouse key. You can also use control key to select multiple uh, folders at once. New in this release is also an option to add mo multiple macromolecules at once. The way you do it, you will go to a folder that contains your PDB files and then instead of uh, selecting one PDB, you will have an option to select multiple PDB file and then this will convert them to a uh, macromolecule PDBQT that you can work for inverse virtual screening. So I'll, I'll click forward. In this tab you'll see that there is now a drop down list where you can select the uh, receptor or macromolecule you're working with and when you select a particular receptor it will show you the search box and by default, Pyrex maximizes the search space so that it will include all the atoms of your macromolecule. This way you won't have to go to each receptor or macromolecule and change the grid dimension for each one individually. So here you can see that we have two receptor and one ligand. So when if I click forward and this will run this ligands against this receptor and show the docking result. New in this release also is an option to select parameters for Vena and here I've just added besides exhaustiveness number of modes. This Some of the users wanted to see fewer number of modes in the final docked confirmation so this lets you choose fewer modes to work with. So when I click forward, again since I've already run this, it will show me pre-computed results. If you have, if this is the first time you're running, it will run this ligand against this receptor, then this ligand against this macromolecule, and then in the analyze tab you will see that we have results of this receptor and this uh, this ligand. Also, we have results for this the other macromolecule one and just G against the same ligand and here you can scroll down through different confirmation and you'll see where you, this ligand is bound. Yeah, I'll zoom in here so we can see better so when I go through different dog confirmation it will show me where this ligand is bound to. The new also in this version is an option to save dog complex as PDB so here I right click on this row and now I have this option to save this PDB this complex this is useful if you want to visualize this doc result with other molecular visualization software let's go back to the list of the features so I've already mentioned the inverse virtual screening the option to add multiple macromolecules at once 
the save doc complex as PDB option, also the parameters for Vina. In this this next new feature is an option to make Open Babel tables uh, sortable. So when you work with Open Babel, you outload one of the SDF from PopChem, and now you will be able to click on the heading and sort this uh, this compounds by molecular weight or number of atoms. This is useful if you are working with large number of molecules and you want to easily sort this. The next feature is a bug fix. It's actually when making a flexible residue now you can work with larger protein. The problem with the previous release of Pyrex, you all select one of these uh, macromolecule and go select some of the residues again using shift or control uh, key you can select multiple residues at once and when you click autodoc make uh, flexible residue that creates a underscore flex folder where it stores the rigid part which includes all the all the res uh, all the residues but this three residues here and then it, it will include the flexible part that will include this flexible residues and the problem with the large mo uh, mo macromolecule was that it was giving a memory error when working with large mo macromolecules so this fix now goes and makes a flexible f uh, part for each residue individually and then combines it into one uh, flexible uh, flex PDBQT file that way you'll be able to work with larger macromolecules. The next feature is an option to run the the uh, docking using SunGrid engine. This is on Linux cluster. Besides the standard uh, local and remote execution mode, there is an option to run on the cluster. And previously Pyrex will support only Torque or PBS cluster job submission methods. Now with this new feature, users who are running Pyrex on a cluster that uses SunGrid engine will be able to do so. So another thing I wanted to mention before finishing the screencast, here I have the publications mentioning Pyrex. It's great to see all these researchers using Pyrex to find new drugs against different diseases here we I have an example of HIV and there was also a case of I think uh, Ebola virus let me see if I can find it here okay yeah yeah this Ebola virus there are also uh, other publications that use Pyrex to find uh, drugs for Alzheimer's or or cancer this is this is great to see this publication and I thank all the users and people who purchase Pyrex for making this possible thank you very much